What is up everybody, it's your boy Vertic here and thank you so much for stopping by. Now I'm trying something new around here, you're probably seeing the entirety of it. I'm standing up, we have the wall behind that I usually have during streaming and I have my Alter Bridge tattoo and my Alter Bridge shirt. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, I'm a fan, okay. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, today I have a very special video for you. Now, you've probably heard this phrase before, such as, BDO has no lore, BDO has bad lore, it's written with crayons, as Blue Squadron said, you know, and I beg to fucking different Blue, but let me just be honest with you guys. BDO's lore, hey, to be fair with you, our spamming really doesn't help the lore being well received by the player base and also once you're done with the questing there is no good system to really take you back or for you to really understand what happens with the lore because some things happen within the quest text other things happen within the dialogue and you don't get to know this but however for these purposes there are people like me and i want to start this series to really introduce people to video lore in a very cool i would say and i need a whoa in a very cool and entertaining way and it, it just to break the silly stigma that BDO has bad lore or rather no lore. BDO has insane lore with such great depth and complexity and also implications which are gonna have you scratching your head wondering what is going on and today is going to be an introduction to the there's a cosmic scene of Black Desert or how this world really came to be can we even trust any of the stories? But before this, a little bit of a disclaimer. See, ladies and gents, video lore is told in a specific way. It's where that misconception comes that Girl Abyss really cannot get their lore facts checked or they cannot really get their continuum ready. It is simply shown as such and that's purposeful. So, in order for you to understand video lore is, well, you know how there is Lord of the Rings and you don't really get to know a lot about the universe of Tolkien unless you have this in your home and you have written it at least once or twice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Silmarillion or in other words, the Bible of Tolkien, that's the best way to really describe it actually, it is a Bible of Tolkien. This is his point of origin of the universe, it spoke about Eru Ilúvatar and of course all of his sons, uh, Morgoth or rather Melkor how it's called, without getting too much into Tolkien. And today, imagine that we do not have this at all and now we have to get inside the world and really pick a faction. And that's the purpose of BDO's lore. BDO is spoken to us in one of the worst, so biased ways by the factions. Everywhere we go, we are manipulated and all of those factions have pros, they have cons, and you do get to be biased. So if you're a warrior or a Valkyrie, you do get to be biased with alienism. If you are a mystic, well, if you've been a fan of this channel, then you know what I think about that. Right, so let's get into it. This is going to be a very cool introduction in terms of how to get into BDO lore. Right, so how do we how do we even start such a thing? Like, we have to talk about conceptualization of a world. It's hard to make one, okay? It's very hard to make one. But the reality of it is that those things do exist. And somewhere along the lines of BDO lore, they have touching points. And some evidence suggests that some stories are a lot more credible than others. In fact, some stories really have the literal gods and we have seen them inside the game. However, we have to go through them one by one. And I think the best way to start is where whenever we start our character, and usually we start with Valencia, but we're gonna go straight into Balanos in the Ancient Stone Chamber. So we have to talk about, well, to be fairly said, it's just uh, God. He is, his name is God. And this is what the, the Kingdom of Balanos for a long period of time believed to be the originator of the world. They said that he created it all, including the people, including all the races, all of it by a single entity's deeds. So we have this happening in Balanos. Now, however, something happened within that country. Now, Balanos is really, really stricken by a lot of grief, by a lot of pain. So many negative things happened there to the point where they lost track of those teachings of their gods, let's just say it like this. And here comes the first entity which we have known for fact to have existed, and it is one of the things which kind of brings more credibility to the story, and that's 
Agris. We've heard about Agris. We have Agris coins. We have Agris fever. We have Agris anvil. We are talking about indeed Agris. He is a demigod or rather a servant of a god who has been sent into the world of video to kind of get the human tribes to stop killing one another. Or at least this is what the Balinosians believe. Now, a lot of things happened with the lore. A lot of things happened after that to the point where the Balinosians, not that they rejected it, but they forgot about their gods because of influence from other species with their other beliefs so on and so forth and Agris was kind of forgotten is simply a name and this is one of the very first parts and actually the simplest and yet very underwhelming premise of Black Desert's online world. Now before we continue further down the line we really need to say something very important and that is that we have a cosmic setting. We know that we are a planet, we know that there is a sun, there is a moon and hints of other quote unquote planets or planes or realms we have seen this in fact we're at war with one right now in the world of Black Desert. And we have to talk about the next, because after all, we do go in Serendia and then we visit Calpheon. Of course, we have to talk about the religion of Elion. And this is where it gets very, very interesting because Elianism is based on scriptures which have been found a long, long, long time ago. But however, Elianism lacks all sort of credibility and evidence to be a functioning religion. And not just that, Elianism is literally used as a tool by the Calfionian nobles to put people under tyranny and milk them for money. It is one of the most tragic things about how a religion is turned into something instead of collecting people into into a little bubble and give them hope, prayer, etc. It actually is used to cheese people around off of their silver in the marketplace. So we have Elianism. Now, who practices this? Well, all of Calpheon with the majority, if not all, of Serendia. If you are a Valkyrie, you practice Elianism. In fact, you are the zealous part of the Elionian church. You're literally the military of the Elionian church. If you're a warrior, you're kind of there, but not really. I mean, depends on where exactly you are from as a warrior because most of them are mercenaries anyways. And Elianism is really a brutal religion. It goes very deep into what and the depths of absolute depravity that people have gone through for the sakes of that religion. It goes so deep into the horrific deeds that that church has done to put people under their throw for something that is just a simple myth. And there is absolutely nothing to back that up outside of a couple of ancient texts used to benefit the Calfionian nobles. Now, Many people are gonna ask, well, you know, whenever you're worshiping a god in Black Desert Online, you do get to have powers. Well, how are Valkyries using, you know, Elion's powers? And, well, there's a little bit of a plot twist over there, but I'm just gonna say something, and that should probably answer your questions. You probably see that in Calpheon, there are other races, right? You see some Elves, you see some Shies. Right? In the vicinity, there are other people practicing different stuff. Yes, a lot of this is from there, but no credibility to be built towards an actual deity. The Elionian church believes in the Lord of Light, Elion. It is the person who has created the plains, created the trees, created the earth, all of it in a similar way to how the Belenosians believe in the quote unquote God and his servant, Agris. This is what they thoroughly believe in. However, this is what the plebeians believe in. Everybody in the higher upper echelon knows that this is not true. Everybody in the higher upper echelon knows that this is a fabrication. And there is a reason why people across the entirety of Black Desert consider the Calfionians the evil guys. They're power-hungry individuals willing to use all tools and means necessary to be as rich as possible. They're the definition of greed. And now that we have a fabricated religion, it has nothing to it. Well, do we have a real religion? And here is where it gets very big. Now we're looking into Allism or the religion of all. Now, if you're a Hashashin, you know perfectly good and well what that is. If you're a Berserker, you're kind of there. If you're a warrior, you're also kind of there. Exactly, you get to really um, experience that power of all, especially as Hashashin. It's literally his entire lore being the disciple of all. So, Allism is actually such an interesting 
story and it's such an interesting point of origin now similar to everybody else they speak about their god all and how he created everything he created the red desert gave it the plentifulness that it has in terms of resources for the people in this harsh part of black desert to be able to survive and People in um, people in Valencia they call it the Red Desert because of how much blood was spilled there. But everybody in the other world they call it the Black Desert simply because in the Median Valencian region is where the black stones are mostly found, and that is simply because in the Alieli, the land of uh, sorry, the Demon Lands above Valencia is where the black stone meteorite crashed with the black spirit in it. So now that we have to speak a little bit about all is. Other other religions, it's all creating the world. However, this is where this becomes very profound because everybody genuinely believes in the allism, everybody genuinely believes in the creationism of all's teachings, and not just that, you get to see that pretty much the Valencian guys are kind of cool. Now, yeah, they do some weird stuff and they do like to torture people in Pilaku jail. Like they had torture Olympics with Kafirs. Like that guy stood there for years being killed every day. He's immortal, by the way, can die. Plenty of fun. But anyways, you know, everybody has a torturer, I guess, into their chambers. Mm. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Allism is one of the very few religions that actually holds some truth and it goes back to ancient times. We have all of these structures built throughout the entirety of the Red Desert, like the sanctums, which all are supposed to mirror a part of All's teaching. So the All's teaching is all about being a human. It's all about being a good person. It's all about being as pure as possible. And it's basically teaching you how to be a kind person like there's nothing else to it and it teaches protection it teaches it teaches so many things and it's absolutely awesome but here's the thing why is allism then so generally accepted couldn't it be a whole lot of lies as well like it could be just that the people that you know worship all are just more zealous than the people who worship elion that is true however you know Think of it like this, you go into Area 51, and you're a human, right, in our world, and you see Bibles there, and you see scriptures written by God, you know, that's a profound thing to witness considering the fact that that is the ultimate place of technology and knowledge, like, you're in the place of science, there is nothing above that place, and these guys are, you guys are learning Bibles and stuff. Well, that is all thanks to Sage. Now, Sage, who is, quote-unquote, the main character of Black Desert Online, he is the creator of Ataraxian. His name is Rux Mahadekia. He is also the creator of Dekia Level 1 and 2. You can thank that guy. Jay had nothing to do with this, by the way. It's, it's all Dekia's fault. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, you get to see that... Tens, if not 20,000 years ago. Sage is, by the way, exceptionally ancient. He is more ancient than history has recorded him to be ancient. As far as we are aware, Sage could be the god of Balanos and we wouldn't even know. And he wouldn't know because, plot twist, he's lost his memories like everybody did. So, one of the things is that in Ataraxian build, all those thousands of years ago, there are mentions of allism. There are mentions of all himself. So, some people do like to think that maybe Sage had a touching point with this, you know, deity called All. So, this is something exceptionally interesting. Like, you know, as I said, it boils down to a place of ultimate science, which is Ataraxian, with the man of ultimate science, which is Sage, and we're talking about religion? Yeah, that's profound as a piece of knowledge. This means that there is definitely more to Allism than there is for um, Elianism. So we have just covered three of these and we have two more or maybe one and a half because I just alluded to the, to the fifth one. So let's talk about number four. And of course, what's my name? My name is Verdict the Mystic. Of course, we're talking about Mystic and the Three Dragons. So Mystic and the Three Dragons is sublime because it is the first time in the world of Black Desert where we actually feel and see the power of gods. Not just that, but ever since Mystic's release, we've been going on the dragon tangent and the godhoodness of dragons in the world and everything that's been going on with them. So, Mystic's lore, long story short, after retrieving herself from Land of the Morning Light and going all the way towards Serendia, post the, what was it called, Martial God Tournament, yes, the Martial God Tournament, of course, unfortunately her ship crashed, she was given a crystal, a red crystal, I think it was an, on a necklace or something like this, I think it was on a necklace, and that particular crystal 
spoke to her upon her dying moment because her ship crashed. She was about to drown in the middle of the ocean after seeing a premonition of three logs in the middle in pretty much something like a whirlpool so she managed to survive because literally banha the deity which spoke to her and told her about the origination of the world how Ban banha who's using now mystic is her avatar with labresca whose daughter is literally guardian with mark Thanan, whose daughters are the draconius of this world we are having those three dragons of exceptional power and godlike abilities tell us that yo um, we made this entire jazz thing here. We're like, this is ours. You guys are just meddling in it and, you know, we we'll allow it because we just like to observe stuff. They literally behave like gods and this is a whole new topic that we will explore in the future. So we have Mystic literally tell us the story of the three dragons which tell her we made it. And that's as close as we've ever got to a point of origination. And remember when I said, now we're going to go a little bit into the fifth one very fast. Remember when I said that Sage could be God and we wouldn't know it? Yeah, he could be indeed. Because that is more profound than find the Bible in Area 51. That is basically like, how, how old are you? You've been here before everybody else. Nobody remembers before you. There is no history before you. So it, it could be that Sage is literally God. And no, <laughs> there is no evidence against it. It's like, are we actually in simulation? Plenty to back it up, nothing to disprove it. And that's one of the cool things about Sage, and that's why people call him the main character of BDO. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've got so far into this video and you hope you enjoyed it. This is the point of origination. Now you get to choose where you stand. You could be with the biased alienism. You could be really into that Valkyrie. You want to put people in there. You could be straight up with Mystic. You could be a fan of Hash. You could be somebody from the Balanosians. And many people are going to tell us, or tell me rather, Verdict, but what about the elves? Ah, well, that's a story for another time because the elves are not from our world. They have their own and witch and wizard are from there as well. Yeah, this was very fun to say. And also, I really enjoy being, uh, I also really enjoy being up. You know what? I really want to put something on those walls and on this wall as well. But those things are kind of expensive. I'm not making really a lot from this channel. You know what you can do? Like and subscribe and maybe you can click on that join button below because why not? It's just a dollar a month. If you can afford it, I would love to have it. <laughs> well, okay, ladies and gents, it was a pleasure to talk to you about BDL Lord. This is introduction to BDL Lord. This is how the world was presumed to be created by all of these factions. They tell their own story. And of course, into the next part, I don't know. Tell me, what do you want to hear down below? Maybe I'll consider it. Maybe we can make a video very fast about it. So enjoy yourselves. Verdict out. Hope you enjoyed me standing up and telling you all these stories. And uh, yeah, help me put something on these walls because it's very bland. <laughs>